And Isaiah 28, 12, God says this. It says, to whom he said, because he tells us, this is the rest. There's a rest. This is the one. This is the rest with which you may cause the weary to rest. Anyone in here weary? Anyone in here tired? Frustrated? Mm. Burned out? Mm. God said, this is the rest. This is the rest which you may cause the weary. Now he said, the weary. Mm -hmm. The one that's working. The one that's working. The one that's, whether you work or not, sometimes even when you don't work, you, you be thinking, oh, I can. No, even when you don't work, you get tired. You get tired of not working. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> So he's saying, this is the rest with which you may cause the weary to rest. And he says, and this is the refreshing. Oh, wait a minute now. And this is the refreshing, yet, yet, what's wrong? Yet. Come on now, come on, come on. My God, my God. I was like, what's wrong with me? Yet. Yet. They were not here. I'm giving you the solution. I'm telling you the solution. Yeah, they would not need it. That's not it. That's too easy. That's not it. That's not it. It can't be that easy. But let me tell you this. When God said this is the rest, here's the definition of the rest he's talking about. This is the definition. This definition of rest is this. It's the way to enjoy tranquil felicity. I said, Lord, what you talking about? What are you talking about? I don't even know what you have for that stuff, Lord. You. The way, this is the way to enjoy tranquil felicity. Okay, break that down to me, Lord. Okay, tranquil. You're free from disturbances. Mm. You're free from distraction. You're free from cares. You're free from all that stuff. You're free from it. This is the way for tranquil, free. Felicity means intense happiness. Oh, wait. So I can have Happiness without being disturbed? Mm. It can be full of happiness. Come on now. God said, yeah, this is this this is this is the rest. Mm -hmm. That's that's the rest. That's what I'm calling you. Oh, uh, this is what I want you to have. Wow. But God said, this is the rest, and not only rest, this is the rest. Now he said, also, oh, this is the refreshing. Lord, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? This is the refreshing. What do you mean by that? So I looked it up, and here's the definition of refreshing. Refreshing means this. It is a cooling. Cool me down, Lord. Cool me. Just come you put it. Cool me down, Jesus. Burning up. It's a cooling. Right? Cooling. It's a recovery of breath. Like, you know, sometimes when you say, man, I can't catch my breath, man. Every time I turn around and something else going on, I can't seem to even catch my breath. And we wonder why so much of us suffer from high blood pressure. We can't catch our breath. This refreshing is a revival. It's this process to reinvigorate you. To revitalize you. Lord, I need some life back inside of me. Because I, I feel like I'm just about to die. I just feel dead inside. I need some life inside of me. So the refreshing is to revitalize me, to, to brace me. I need something to brace me up sometimes. To fortify me. You know how someone they've been battered, they can't take it no more? Right. And God is, and they say, man, I need something just to fortify me. You know how we drink certain drinks to fortify you? Yeah. To refresh you. I need something to enliven me, to energize me, to rejuvenate me. I need something to breathe something new in me, to inspire me. Because inspire talks about breathing something new. I need something to breathe new in me. And I like this word, revify. Rev up. I need something to rev me up. 
Because you know, sometimes you be sitting like, oh, Lord. Yeah. Oh, yeah. One more service. All right, let's go to church. Huh? I need something to rev me back up. I need something to cause me to come back to my first love. Yeah. Yeah. Rev me up, Jesus. Thirst quenching. It says, the refreshing is supplying of something necessary to restore lost strength, animation, and power. I need something to restore the power. God, you said you're going to give me power. They said, and you should receive power after the Holy Spirit has come on you. Lord, where's that power? It's in the refreshing. It is in the refreshing. So where, how do we get it? How do we get it? All right, let's go to the next scripture. In Acts 3.19, it says this. Acts 3.19, it says, Repent ye therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out when the times S of refreshing shall come from the Oh, this is why you don't want me to come to church. This is why you don't want me to get that refreshing. This is why I can't get the rest. There's times and seasons next time for everything. There's a time for sickness. There's a time for death. There's a time for laughing. There's a time for crying. There's a time to study and a time to be tested. There's a time to love and a time to fight. There's a time for reaping and sowing. There's a time to hustle and work and work and work and labor. There's a time for rest. There's a time for marriages and there's a time for funerals. But there's also times of refreshing. We go through all the others, but we never come to this point where we say, oh my God, refresh me. Times of refreshing you all is the most neglected season. Because it's a season of refreshing. Let me give you all an example. This is our lives, right? We got all this stuff sometimes. Right? We got all this junk, dirt. You know, you're mad, angry, you know, all kind of stuff. Well, none of us, the Bible says, for all of sin and come short of the glory of God. All of us got some stuff inside of us. Sickness comes, fills it up. Death. Fighting. Arguments, misunderstandings. After a while, you feel full of this. But God says, I need you to come because there's a time where I want to refresh you. There's a time where I need to refresh you. There's a time I, I want to just pour into you. Like, you don't pour, don't say nothing to me. I'm God. Don't say, you don't have to say anything. You don't have to make this work. You don't have to try this out. I'm God. So God is saying, you've gone through so much. You, you've already had to deal with a lot. And sometimes we come to church, we get a little bit. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And you come and get a little bit more. You read your Bible, get a little bit more. Lord, I thank you. I thank you. You get a little bit more. Listen. Then after a while, God said, you won't come to me. You're going to repent and be converted and you're going to be committed to this thing? Okay, because when you do, hold this for me. So he's saying, okay, here, here's what I want to do for you. Now let me tell y'all something. This is how I felt as a Christian. Because when stuff comes and trouble comes and problem comes, you feel full. Like you say one more thing to me, I'm going to explode on you. You, 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 you get me? Yeah. Yeah. 
And we ain't joking. Because we're full. We feel like sometimes, oh, that, see, yeah, thank you, Jesus, I'm full. No, you ain't. He said, I don't want to fool you. I want to. I want to pour into you so much that that stuff inside of you keep bubbling up. And that stuff bubble up, oh gosh, that the Holy Spirit come inside of you and overflow you. Now y'all see how that little bit of Cause that's what it takes. Mm. It don't take a one time. Mm. It takes times of refreshing. Uh -huh. Times of refreshing. Times of refreshing. And so this is what God is telling us. You got to start coming to me. Cause if you think it's out there, it's not out there. You need to come here. Cause there's some times. Just like how it took a long time for you to get where you are right now, and, and for you to get. There's times you got to keep coming to the Lord. Jesus. Pour me in, Lord. Yes. Fill me up, Lord. Yes. Fill me up, Lord. Yes. I want to overflow, Lord. Because I want to be able to share with my sister and brother, Lord. Because they're going through, too. Yeah, they go. My God, my God, my God. Times of refreshing.